Hey friends. <sighs> I'm back home, as you can see by the nondescript white background that I am in front of. Had a lovely trip to New York. Pretty easy trip back. Uh, family's kind of under the weather today, but you know, goes with the territory. And I, um, I had a, I had a thought yesterday, shortly before we left New York, I think, and I made a little note of it, and it's been, it's been unpacking itself ever since, and it's, it started out thinking about writing and the nature of the nature of professional writing in the case of like screenplays and television shows. I was just thinking about the way those shows, the creation process for those shows and, and, um, and how some of them actually choose their own end point. In other words, they decide after a certain number of seasons that the show's over. And versus other shows that just kind of perpetually get renewed until they don't get renewed anymore. And I always find it... I find it remarkable to note how different those two kinds of shows feel. And it's pretty rare, actually, that a show decides to stop being created before it has kind of run its full market potential course. And as a result, it's a, it's the rare show that really gets to where the narrative of the, of the narrative that's that the story itself gets to determine the ending of the piece. Most of the time, at the end of each season, we have to sort of like re, we sort of leave something open and then, and then move into the, and so that then the next season can pick up and either continue or go in another direction. But, but a lot, but I get the sense in watching a lot of these shows that, that it's basically, there's no real, core message that can be delivered because the story has to keep going on even after a lot of times the original creator leaves the original writers leave and so the show just kind of lives on it's almost like this zombie show these and, and and there's a lot of them. These zombie creative pieces that are actually dead. Narratively, they've they should have ended, but they don't. They continue because uh, that's the way that that's the way that market forces impact work on uh, in that medium most of the time. Every once in a while, there's a show that just decides, okay, this is the, this is season one, this is season two, this is season three, four, however many it is, and here's where the story ends. Um, and so then, so that's kind of how I, that was where I started. And where I then went was to this idea that, like, in a lot of ways, the ending of a show is like the death of a show. And so a show that decides when to end or that where the creators decide based on the story when to end the story, that's like a story that gets to choose its own death. Whereas in the other case, the, the, the death comes... 
whenever external factors decide that it's time. And so then that got me thinking about, okay, well, mortality, you know, in a lot of ways, this relates for me to what Sadhguru talks about when he says, create the structure of your life within the context of mortality. Because we don't want to forget that we're going to die. Now, this is a different point. I'm re I'll relate it in a minute. But, the, but his point is, we shouldn't just live as though we're going to live forever. We should live as though we're going to die. Because that palpable sense of our own finitude will give us an impulse it'll give us a, it'll give us a provocation to use our life it, it, it in a way that gets us where we want to go in the time we have it doesn't just renew ad infinitum and it certainly doesn't renew due to some kind of external factors that we don't that we don't control um you know we can make choices in our life that are going to lengthen our likely lifespan or shorten it but we can't We can't extend beyond our time. And, and I think maybe part of why this is also coming home to me is because, you know, a trip out of town like this, super enjoyable, and we had a blast, and it was a, it was a roller coaster. Um, but it was also, it's also just a chance to sort of come home and reevaluate and take stock. And so... On a day like today is actually kind of a nice day because it's, you know, Annalise is homesick, Katie's homesick, everybody's kind of like recovering. If I weren't <laughs> already at home working, I would be home from my work. Um, and so, but anyway, but there's this, there's this, this, this idea that's kind of, coming up inside me about life and death and the influence on our creative work and all of our work that 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 that, that awareness drives and then when I started at, at, when I kind of came from this I don't know thought experiment about television shows it it got me it got me reflecting on the way that mortality and the end point because the other thing that happens when we know that a, when, when a creative project is able to say this is where it ends because the creator the kind of core nucleus of creators are able to say this is where it ends then somehow the full message, the full content, the core gets to, gets to emerge. It gets to flower. And live. Whereas, if the thing is going to keep going and we don't know if it's going to keep going. We don't know if this is the end and we don't know if, you know, how long or how far or what, you know, there's a whole kind of different logic of storytelling that has to take place. And it's basically a logic of immortality. It's a logic of 
we want to do everything we can to just assume that we're going to keep going and we're not going to commit to anything that would be too final. Anything that would preclude the story going on. And a lot of times things that preclude this, a lot of times delivering the core message of a story means doing things that preclude the story going on. That's why I find it so annoying. You know, the TV writers have got, have, have, have understood that when two people who are in love, sort of like, you know, the kind of like rom-com thing of like ducking and diving and not quite ever meeting, well, if those two people ever meet, they know that the tension's gone and the story's over. So as as the story goes on and on and on, those two people can never, they, they're never permitted to, to actually really fully connect by the writers, even if the story sort of would demand that, or if it feels like that's where it's going, you have to, you have to, you have to kind of lie about it. You have to change something and you have to put in these arbitrary and ultimately pretty unsatisfying twists that as a viewer, I've started to learn to, learn to sort of throw up my hands and go, ah, you've lost me now because, because I don't believe that. Now I don't believe the reality of, of your characters or your, or your circumstances anymore because you keep violating that because why? Because if you did the thing that the story is calling for, then it would be over and you'd have to end. And that would mean you couldn't do next season. And so I've kind of learned to, I, I guess, not even really, this isn't conscious, but it's just something that I've, just, I've learned to tune into and I pretty quickly get, get fed up with it. But I notice that the same thing is is really kind of true of any creative project. It's got to live and it's got to die. And that's a mirror of life. That's a mirror of us. That's a mirror of what being alive really is.
Thanks, Will. Have a great day. Appreciate you. I'll see you soon.